Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 45. Hey, if you want to download this workbook or the PDF files and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, Chapter 7, our last topic is sample proportion and the sampling distribution of p-bar. Now, sample proportion, we've already seen a lot of these. It's just p bar, we're going to take x divided by n, where x is the number of elements in the sample that possess the characteristic of interest. We might ask, do you balance your checkbook? Yes or no. Did you sit in traffic? Yes or no. Did you respond to the letter asking for donations? Yes or no. Sounds like a binomial experiment, and it is. And n, of course, is the sample size. So we're going to go out and take a sample and get some proportion or percentage. The sampling distribution of p bar, if we went through the same steps as we did last video, we could create it and we would discover the same things. It's normally distributed, there's less variation, and p bar equals exactly the population p. Now there's one thing we have to check. For the sampling distribution of p bar to be approximated by the normal distribution, we have to take sample size times our proportion. That has to be greater than or equal to 5. And we have to take that same sample size and 1 minus the proportion. And that has to be greater than or equal to 5. If both of those are true, then we can use the normal distribution. As we mentioned just a second ago, expected p bar equals population proportion. Now the standard error of the proportion or standard deviation of p bar, here it is right here. p divided by the complement of p divided by n and the square root. Oh, and there's that correction factor. And the same rule applies. If sample size divided by population size is less than or equal to 0.05, then we do not have to use this correction factor. We can just use this standard deviation sub p bar. Now let's go over to Excel. Our first example, we're going to assume the population proportion p is the proportion of Americans that balance their checkbook. And that's equal to 0.56. If the population in the USA is 300 million, and we take a sample of 400 Americans, answer the following questions. The questions are down here. What is the probability that the sample proportion will be within plus or minus 0.02 of the population proportion? And what's the probability that it will be within plus or minus 0.04? Exactly like last video, except for now we're using the central limit theorem and proportions. Now, here's our p, so our 1 minus p equals 1 minus p not balanced checkbooks. If this is the population parameter that Americans balance their checkbook, then 0.44 do not balance their checkbook. Hey, there's our population n, our sample size. We can go and check and see if we have to use our correction factor. Equals little n divided by big N. And it's much. It's teeny, teeny. We could have eyed that one. We didn't even need to calculate it. Much too small. Now we can do our standard error. Equals the square root. And we have to do p times 1 minus p. And we already calculated that. So those and then divide by our n. Now the multiplying in here will work left to right and then division. So we simply close our parentheses and enter. That is our standard error. For the sampling distribution of p bar, that is going to be our standard deviation. And the original population parameter proportion, that's going to be our expected p bar. Now, can we use normal? We have to have these two checks. So equals n 400 times our p. Is that going to be greater than 5? It's going to be gigantic equals the complement of p times rn. Is that going to be bigger than 5? It's going to be gigantic. That means we can use our norm.dist with our proportions. Now, what is the expected p bar? Oh yeah, it's just given. Enter. Now we can calculate our two probabilities. Margin of error, that's the amount on either side of our expected p bar that we add. So we're going to get 0.54 and 0.58 equals our expected p bar minus the margin error tab equals 
our expected p bar plus our margin of error tab. Now we have a p bar upper and a p bar lower. So we can use norm.dist. And oh, look at this. The screen tip says x. Well, we've used norm.dist with x's, with x bars, and now we're going to use it with p bar. So no problem. The bigger p bar, comma, mean, it's not a mean for an x or an x bar. It's our expected p bar, comma, and then our standard deviation. Remember, this is the standard error. This is the standard error of the sampling distribution of p bar comma cumulative 1. That'll give us everything in our curve up to 0.58, but we need to subtract another norm disk. Oh, there's the p bar we put into x, comma the mean. That's our expected p bar, comma our standard deviation. That's the standard error of the sampling distribution of p bar, comma, and then 1 close parentheses, and Enter. And there's our probability the probability that the sample proportion, our p bar, will be within plus or minus 0.02 of the population proportion is about 58%. Now we can do it for the other one. Equals, well, we got to go get our p bar minus the bigger margin of error tab. Equals, we've got to go get our p bar plus the bigger margin of error tab. And now our two norm.dis. We're going to take the upper p bar, comma, our expected p bar, our standard error, comma, one close parentheses, and the norm.dis. Hey, not x. We're going to take our lower p bar, comma, not the mean, but our expected p bar, comma, and our standard error, comma, one close parentheses, and Enter the probability that the sample proportion, or p bar, will be within plus or minus 0.04 of the population proportion is about 90%. So if we went out and took a sample, we're about 90% sure that our p bar would fall between 52% to 60% of Americans balance their checkbook. Hey, we want to go look at example two, p bar two. Now, in this example, the p or the population proportion is an insurance company's claim that they settle claims within one week at a rate of 75%. So if the number of policies issued is 35,000, we go out and take a sample of n equals 300, we want to calculate the probability that our p bar would fall within 0.04 margin of error of our population proportion. Now, we don't really need to calculate this, but we can do this because 300 divided by 35,000 is going to be much smaller than 0.05. That just means we don't have to use our correction factor. Our expected p bar, hey, we were given that and Enter. The standard error for the sampling distribution of p bar, hey, we'll take the square root and better get that p. And I didn't calculate 1 minus p, but I can simply do it right here in the formula, times 1 minus p, and divide it by our n of 300. So that will be Enter, our standard error of 0.025. Now we can calculate our p bar 1 and 2 with our margin of error equals, hey, there's our expected p bar minus 0.04. Enter equals expected p bar plus our margin of error. Now we need to test whether we can use the normal distribution. So I'm going to test. And I can already see it's probably going to be pretty big numbers here. So we got our p.75 times our n, enter, 225, and the complement, 1 minus p. I did control up arrow there, close parentheses, times our n, and we get another big number. We can use the normal to approximate the binomial. Now we want to calculate the probability between these two proportions for finding a p bar. So equals O, oh, and it's norm.dist again. Our upper p bar, 0.79, comma, our expected p bar, comma, our standard error, 
comma, one, close parentheses. And then we subtract another norm disk. That x, oh yeah, that's the lower p bar, comma. Our mean is going to be our expected p bar. Standard deviation is our standard error, comma, one, close parentheses, and Enter. So the probability that we could go out and get a p bar that lies between 0.71 and 0.79 proportion of claims settled within one week is about 90%. All right, in this video, we talked about p bar and the sampling distribution of p bar. And we talked about how to use the normal distribution to approximate and make probabilistic statements about finding a p bar within a lower and upper value. We saw this insurance example here. And then back on the p-bar, we saw this balancing your checkbook example. All right, that's it for chapter 7. Next chapter, chapter 8, we'll talk about confidence intervals. All right, we'll see you next video.